and welcome to Kerchi Crochet Hooks. Please enjoy our free tutorials with just one of a 24 part series on teaching you how to crochet. Subscribe to start receiving our 24 courses that are delivered to your email inbox every few days. By the time you're done, you'll know the ins and outs of crochet. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. So now let's get crocheting with Curtsy. And welcome to the Curtsy Crochet Hook program. Today is lesson number 14 where we're going to be working on rib stitching. In rib stitching, it causes things to be able to contract as well as to expand. I guess I should go the other way around. That's cool. You know what I mean. Usually people use this around the top of a hat, top of the sock, the belt, any kinds of materials where they do need the actual contraction to be happening. You'll notice that with crochet, and I've done this a gazillion times, where I made a hat slightly too big. And once you stretch it and you say, oh, it's great, but once you stretch it once, then it doesn't ever comes back. So the rib stitching allows you to be able to have control and to give flexibility to your work. So let's get started on lesson number 14 here in the Curtsy Crochet Hook program. In today's tutorial we're going to be using the Bernat Mosaic yarn and this is calling for a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. And so I got my Curtsy Crochet Hook out and I got my material ready and I'm going to create a slip knot and we are doing the rib stitching. So just back over the forward, we've already done this in previous tutorials, creating a slip knot. Now with the rib stitching, it's only in sets of two. And usually when I say sets of two, that means that the pattern repeats every set. So one, two, the new pattern is one, two. So let's uh, go ahead, this is not one, but we're gonna chain one and two. Chain one and two. One and two one and two. So when you're working on your afghans or any kind of scarves you just have to always stay in sets of one and two and just kind of measure it out and see if it's long enough and then when you think it's long enough I just want you to stop and then just pick back up. So we'll go one and two and we'll just hold and we'll begin to do the first level of starting to do the ribs. Using your finger and your thumb I want you to pinch down here and instead of actually um, counting stitches a lot of the patterns say you count back three from the stitch or et cetera, et cetera. I always just pinch and then that will be the first stitch we go into. I want you to double crochet. So we're gonna one, two, and three. We're gonna chain up three because we're gonna do a double crochet. And the first stitch will be exactly where I was pinching. So just shift your thumb out of the way, wrap the material going in, pulling it through, and then through two and two. If you need a refresher on double crochet, here's, here it is. You're gonna wrap the material, going into the very next stitch and there should be two strings on top one on the bottom pull the material through and then through two and two and what I want you to do is go all the way across this line as double crochet and you're thinking to yourself oh my god that's nothing to do with the the rib stitch and in fact yes it is we need to create a, a boundary or an establish these posts because the posts are existing in between all of the stitch. Remember that these things that you see are the post. So you need to establish those before you can start making any kind of rib formations when doing this stitch. So let's uh, meet back up at the end of this line and we'll begin starting the process of rib stitching. We're now at the end of the line and now we want to turn it around and we begin the rib stitching. So the rib stitching is about playing with the back and the front posts and the posts again are the things in between and what we want to do is that we want to come down and grab. The thing about this though is that we want to do a double crochet rib posting idea and because we're grabbing way down here when we go to start we can't just normally chain up three for double crochet and in actual fact we can only do two on the ends and that's because the double crochet is going to force it to go down lower than it should therefore it would cause the edges to go up on an angle so what we can, can just do is that you can just choose the first one to be forward or the back so in this one I'm just going to choose it to be forward so we're just going to come in through the front pop it grab the material, pull it through two and two. And that is a double crochet front post. Okay, so you might see DCFP. And now the next one will be in the back. So wrapping, I'm gonna pop it through the back, forward, and then back out. Pull it through two and two. The next one will be on the front. Okay, so every other stitch is going to be either 
on the front or the back depending on what you started with. So the next one will be on the back. And so what I want you to do now is just go all the way through the other line, no matter what size that you just did this project on, going all the way front and back, all the way to the end. And then on the very last one, I want you to half double crochet, but let's meet back up there and just finalize that visually for you to confirm that you're doing it right. So let's meet up at the end of this line. I'm coming up to the very end and I've just grabbed around this post. So I got two more posts left, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to grab it in the same way. So this next post is the second last and you can see that this one's behind. So this one is going to be in the forward. And the next section that we have, we're not going to actually grab in the post, but we're just going to stay on the edge, edge of it. Okay. So remember what we said over here that we only chained up two because the double crochet is sinking lower. And this side, we're only going to half double crochet. So wrapping the material going right into the actual stitch. Don't ever go into this gap area, like into there. You will not be happy with yourself if you do that. It'll separate it out. So half double crochet, we wrap and through pull through, we have three on the hook, pull through all three. And you can see that the height of that just matched exactly what you were doing before, which is ideal. So let's turn this material around and chain up. Again, the same rule applies because you're going to be sinking a little bit lower. You cannot chain up three when you're double crocheting with these. You're only going to chain two. So with rib stitching, the rib is going to maintain itself throughout the project so that you appear to be having like sandbars in a beach. Uh, when you look into the water and what I want you to do is double crochet and if it's on the back which the first one is you're going to come in from the back and pop it back out pulling it through two and two so the next one is on the front you can clearly see it's on the front so coming in from the front side and so the rib stitching is going to maintain the rib all the way up and down there's other ways of doing um, this kind of work you can do zigzag um, patterning which I think is really quite um, hot to be really honest with you. It's, I find it hard to teach on the camera but it is phenomenal. I've done a scarf with it and people rave all about it. Um, so what are the disadvantages of this kind of stitch versus others? Well you will notice because you are grabbing down through the bottom. Okay, so this post here, you really can't see it very closely, but there's actually a top edge and then the next one. When you're changing colors and doing the rib, it is very clearly obvious and sometimes if you don't choose your colors properly, properly, you will notice that there's a significant difference in the look and it can actually really look like your project is not really well done. So what I tried to do is, especially when you're doing this kind of stitching for a brim of a hat, that you try not changing colors too much or if the colors are changing, that you're very uh, careful with the colors that you choose. Um, a, a great example would be red and white, uh, the Canadian flag colors. Changing them uh, on a rib like this would be, uh, would be detrimental. It would not work out in your favor. So we're just going all the way across as I've chit-chatted you all the way. And basically, you just have to keep going back and forth, back and forth. I've seen whole Afghans done like this. Um, so the advantages of... Uh, this kind of stitch, remember we're on the edge now, I should talk my way, I'm on the edge, I'm going to half double crochet. So there you have it, that was lesson number 14 of doing rib stitching and you can see the value added when you start playing with the ribs. So now you really can see we're more than halfway through our program already and you can already see that your skills are already starting to build. Let's now schedule you for lesson number 15 and in lesson number 15 I'm going to show you how to do ripple stitching and ripple stitching really does remind me of a bottom of a beach when you have all the sandbars all those little ripples in the in the sand underneath the water this is what the ripple stitch reminds me of and it is absolutely truly beautiful and done in the right colors it looks absolutely sharp so let's schedule you now for lesson number 15 of the curtsy crochet hook program until next time i'm your host mike